John, welcome to Portsmouth Football Club. First of all, how does it feel to be the club's new head coach? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the welcome. I mean, it feels incredible. It's, it's an absolute privilege, I think, first and foremost. And it's just really exciting. Nerve-wracking, definitely nerve-wracking, but uh, exciting. And just I think there's so much opportunity and so much potential that, you know, it's impossible to not really feel incredibly excited about it. How did this opportunity arise and how have the last few days been for you? Yeah, so I, I know, well, I first met Rich in the summer, um, Rich Hughes in the summer, the, the sporting director, when he was on the pro licence um, as, as a sort of guest external speaker coming in and speaking to some of the, the young aspiring coaches about, you know, some of the processes in place with sporting director, which is a fairly new role in this country. And, and Rich and I got speaking and, and then, you know, ended up realising that pretty quickly over the course of the pro lines, as we were we were aligned in terms of the way that we would we would go about um, go about our business with uh, with football playing style, the way we'd handle things off the pitch, and I think he knew I made it pretty clear that I had ambitions to be a head coach or a manager at some point in the future, um, you know, with no agenda at all. But that's uh, you know that was was pretty much how I, I suppose the the seeds were planted, and, and as it panned out, um, you know, it was it was a conversation with with Rich about the possibility of coming and. Um, going through the process for becoming the head coach, and of course, when I received that that phone call, it was it was obvious to me that that was something I'd be really interested in doing, and entered into the process, um, which was you know, which was rigorous and that was was thorough and was difficult, was really difficult. But I think that was a good sign, and and I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the fact that I didn't didn't find it particularly easy, um, and it was stressful and it, and it tested me a lot. So, I think when you come at the uh, come away at the back end of that, you realise that. Um, you know, it's, it's the right place to be. Have you spoken to many people about this role? And if so, what have been some of the messages? I've spoken to a few people about this. Um, I need to speak to a couple more because uh, my inbox is absolutely full of, of messages and I need to pick up on a couple of those and, and speak to a few of the people that, um, you know, that have, have reached out to me. I, I didn't need to speak to too many people to know what it, what it means to, uh, to play for Portsmouth and to be the head coach of Portsmouth. It, it, was, it was really something that was self-evident to me. And just having had a feel of the city today and having had a feel of the community and, and everybody that works here, um, the press, everything about it just, just tells me exactly what I need to know, that um, no, this is an absolutely massive football club and everybody here wants success, everybody here wants to do well and, and not just success in terms of winning, they, you know, they want to see if things done the right way and you know, I genuinely believe that it's set up to do that. Now, this is your first experience of being a head coach. Did you think this opportunity would come around at this stage in your career? I, I didn't know, to be honest. Uh, I didn't think it was far away. I'd, I'd always felt, well, I'd say in the last six months, I've really felt ready to take that, that head coach role and, and to step into a different role than I was, was doing at Oxford. I, I thought that something might you know, possibly come up next, uh, this year as I'd been signalling, I suppose, that it was really a pathway I wanted to take. One thing that I didn't expect to come up was the, the Portsmouth job. Um, you know, for obvious reasons, but uh, not to say I didn't think I'd be able to do it and don't think I'll be able to do it. Uh, it's just one of those things, I, you know, as, as everyone said, it's, it's um, an appointment that nobody probably really saw. And, and hopefully that's a positive. I think it's, it's good that I can come at it from a fresh angle. Up to now, you've been registered as a player for Oxford. You've even made appearances this, se this season. How do you think you're going to find that transition from being a full-time professional footballer into being a full-time head coach? I think it'll be interesting, but certainly, even though I've played this season, I've you know very much been on the back burner in, in terms of where my playing career is. My focus hasn't been on playing, my focus has much more been on the, the coaching side of it, and I've had to play a couple of games, mainly through injury and illness back in September, and I've been in a couple of squads and made a couple of appearances since. So that's going to be interesting for me. I, as I sign the papers to um, sort of terminate my registration today. It, I thought, you know, that's that's it for me as as a player, which is which is fine. I I feel comfortable with that, and I've I've had my playing career. I think I've I've probably achieved everything I was um, ever sort of going to achieve, and I'm not sure I'm going to ever get any higher than uh, than than where I'd had been previously. So I, I get all that. I'm really comfortable with that, and you know, open up a space for someone young and emerging coming through on the, on the playing side and, and hopefully I can you know, be the mirror of that on the head coaching side. Your aspirations of becoming a head coach have been well noted over the years, so how proud are you to have been given this opportunity? Incredibly proud, incredibly proud. I, th I mean, I would have gone into any club and, and been proud, I think, and just to have got the role and to have actually fulfilled the ambition of, of becoming a head coach and, and taking up a role that was something I've, I've dreamt about for 
close to sort of 15, 16 years now. And again, just compounding that with the fact that I'm here and I'm sat here in this dressing room and in this stadium at the moment, uh, you know, that just, you know, it, it fills me with, it fills me with a lot of pride. You've had experience as club captain at Preston, Burton and Oxford United. So how will that leadership experience on the field help you be a leader in the dugout? Well, I think there's, there's a lot of qualities that you can take across both and, and there's a lot of things that will, will mirror in both. Essentially, you're trying to lead a team and you're trying to influence the team to, um, to do things that you want them to do. Uh, as a player, it's probably, I always found it something that was challenging, enjoyable, loved getting the best out of people's personalities. I loved de dealing with different people and across the board, you have to deal very differently with, with absolutely everybody in the squad because they're humans and that's the way they operate. So I think that's a real challenge to make sure that you don't have this top-down approach and just deal with everybody in exactly the same way. And, and I was always like that as a, as a club captain. There are going to be differences, of course, huge differences. There is, there's a lot more responsibility on the head coach and also less influence on a match day in terms of actually being out there and playing. I always felt that when I was playing, I was much less nervous than when I've ever been coaching because there's nothing you can do once the, the lads have stepped over the white line. And I'm guessing I'm going to feel that tomorrow as part of the nervousness that builds up towards match days. A role you've also had experience in is chairman of the PFA. Just tell us a little bit about that role. Yeah, well, I've been involved with the PFA for quite a few years now and we restructured the entire organisation about two and a half years ago now. And at the end of that, I ended up being elected as, as chair. So very different sphere, but in sport, in terms of a leadership role, in terms of restructuring teams and trying to change the culture in an organisation, uh, it gave me a few things, I think a few bits of insight that are really interesting and, and a couple of things that hopefully I can apply in the football world. I, I get it, it's, it's a completely different kettle of fish being in a business organisation and, and everything's more corporate and, and this, is, you know, this is about what goes on on the grass and what goes into the training ground and what goes into the stadium here. So completely understand that. But again, I think there's a lot of things you can transfer from one to the other. Yeah, how do you think your time there can help you transition and your experiences there can help you becoming a head coach? Well, for me, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's the same thing. You're, you're leading people and you're trying to influence people and you're trying to get people to buy into your long-term vision. And essentially that's it. And, you know, again, doing it away from sport or doing it away from the, the pitch and, and doing it on the pitch, I think there are, there are similarities. So I think some of those qualities that I've drawn upon through the years, hopefully I'll be able to put into place here. And, you know, there's plenty of things in terms of, you know, things like media exposure have been, have been invaluable for me over the past couple of years. And I've just been thrust into that limelight, I suppose, in, in other areas. Um, nothing's prepared me for this, uh, you know, granted, but I've sort of taken steps to get there. So it's not all just sort of one, all at once and, and, and no preparation. Now, let's delve into the football side of things. As I mentioned earlier, this is your first experience as a head coach. So can you just describe your, your game idea and, and, and style of play? Yeah, so I think in terms of being out of possession, we want to have a real identity of how we're going to press and how we're going to close down. It's going to be aggressive, it's going to be front-footed, um, we're going to be intense and we're going to be fit. And those things are you know, going to take some implementation, they're going to take some time. Uh, it's going to take words from me, it's going to take pictures and then it's going to take coaching it for the players to actually understand everything that I'm after and the club's after because it's not just... It's not just what, what I want. Um, that aligns with, I think, the values that the club are looking to see on the pitch. And everything I've, everything I've said in, the, um, in everything with the press and with the fans, I think that everybody's pretty much aligned on that as well. That's, that's what people want to see. I think on the ball, it's a mixture between being pragmatic and also trying to dominate possession, switch the ball, make sure that we are very creative and essentially play attacking football. So attacking front-footed football again on, on that side of it and just creating some excitement I think some creating some excitement and it's a difficult thing to do that's probably what I've described there is you know the um, the ideal of any sort of game idea or, or football model that you want to have but that's what we're going to strive to that's definitely what we'll, we'll strive towards and we won't hit everything but we'll hit a few of them and hopefully the more that we hit the better and and that's really important because once we do all that I think people can see the identity we're trying to create and also we're going to win games off the back of it. And ultimately, that's the most important thing. Now, if you can single a few out, what would you say are some of the key attributes of a John Massino team? I think we've got to be fit. We've definitely got to be fit. Fitness is, is absolutely huge. I haven't had a chance to come in and, and really um, you know, speak to the Sport and Exercise Science Department about that. Uh, it's an absolute prerequisite. Players probably handle the ball for 90 seconds to two minutes every game and the rest of the time they are running. 
and they're running high distances at high speed and they're sprinting. So they've got to be able to do that and they've got to have robustness and, and stay injury free. Um, so you know, that, that's a characteristic. There's, there's, there's others that are, are harder to define. There's, there's passion that we want to see. And that's something that the players are going to have to develop themselves. You know, they're going to have to be able to show that. It's got to be intrinsic. Motivation has got to come from them. They've got to be motivated to wear the shirt. They've got to be motivated to play out there every Saturday and Tuesday and, and keep going from there. So I think those are a couple of the things just away from playing style that we'll really be looking for and, and we'll be really looking to sort of weave into the team's identity. How would you describe your leadership style? I think I'm going to be very relationship based and, um, you know, I've... I've already had quite a few chats with uh, some of the players and, and ultimately you know, treat them as what they are. They're, they're, they're humans and, and I value them and, and I want them to improve. And ultimately, for me, it's about how I can do that, how I can improve them, how I can take them from, from A to B. Because if they're better players um, and if they develop, hopefully they'll do it with Portsmouth, uh, that will help the club, that will help the football club. And everything's about the long-term interest of the football club for me. Um, so you know that's that's how I'll that's how I'll lead. If I have to make decisions at, you know, every single day, and, and I'll do that, I won't be afraid to do that. But certainly, I think a bit more collaboration um, with the players, a bit more collaboration between departments, um, and I think everyone will be you know, nice and happy. Now you've completed your first day at the training ground today with the players. What did the day involve, and how did you find it? Yeah, I, obviously it was it was very fast paced, and meeting everybody. At sort of such short notice was probably the best thing to, to do because I didn't really have time to do anything else. Managed to get down the training ground after a couple of press duties this morning, and once I was at the training ground, it was it was pretty quick. I spoke to the coaching team about what I expected for the day and what we were going to do. Then talked to the players. It was my introduction to the players. Said a brief bit about myself and a couple of the expectations that I set out for everyone, and then we got out and trained. Uh, just a short, sharp training session the day before the game. Got a couple of principles in that we really want to instill with the players and got a couple of bits of shape in there. I didn't want to put a huge amount of, of burden on them and have a huge amount in terms of what they're thinking about. It's been a tough couple of weeks for them. They've, they've gone from obviously having a manager or having a head coach to having an interim, uh, not really knowing what's going on, everything, speculation, speculation, speculation. And then finally, late last night, early this morning, they're hearing my name and I walk into the training ground and um, you know, thankfully we got to speak to the players just before everything was announced. So the players were the first to know. It was, you know, it was, it was great, it was brilliant to be there. It was great to be out on the grass um, coaching them and I'm really looking forward to um, many more after Saturday. Yeah, you touched on it there. How much are you looking forward to working with the players as professionals and more importantly, as you say, getting to know them as individuals as well? Well, yeah, that's a real challenge for me is, is how I actually switch from that relationship that I had with them, um, not these players, but relationship I had with players previously, which is, you know, a leadership role, but I could be their friend, I could, I could be their mate and I could go out and have a drink with them. Um, and I didn't think it was any, it was great. That was, it was me, I was part of the squad and that's, that's got to change now. That's got to change, it's got to be a professional relationship, but I, I don't want it to be um, an us and them. And I don't want it to be, you know, this, this blame culture between the two. We'll both take responsibility for, for our own actions and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll collaborate and ultimately I'll make the decision but I do value their opinions. Um, I've got to build those relationships. I've, I've got um, young players in there that, that want to play. I've got quite a few that all are competing for 11 shirts and that's a tough thing in the first instance when a new head coach comes in and picks a team straight away and you think, well, is he not valuing me? And that's just not the case. Value absolutely everyone here and everyone um, you know, really has got a part to play. How can you get the most out of this group of players? I think they're a really good group of players. I think we've got some really good talents in there. Uh, I think that they need a bit of energy, a bit of enthusiasm. I think they need a bit of guidance. Uh, I think there's some, some work to be done, obviously, on the pitch, but, but also just to try and give them the freedom to play. Uh, from what I've seen recently, and I know it's been difficult, they just seem to have lost that freedom, lost that ability to go out and, and express themselves. So that's what I want them to do. I want to see that uh, when we play Exeter, a bit of um, expression, a bit of freedom, just on and off the ball as well, and just you know let the shackles off. and. Um, even in the first instance before we get a chance to, to really dig down into, into what we're doing on the playing, playing side specifically, um, get back to enjoying their football. You joined just over halfway through the January transfer window, so what are the aims between now and the end of the month? Yeah, same aims as we had at the start of the month, so they won't change and that's part of the beauty of the structure of the football club is that the recruitment process is, is run by Rich and the recruitment team and obviously I've got input into that and, um, you know, Rich would, would never do this, but if the recruitment team and, and, and Rich, the sporting director, decided to give me a player that I'd never seen, 
it should be the sort of profile that will fit into that playing style and fit into the way that Portsmouth want to play. Of course, like I say, that will never happen, but we've got time. There's plenty of time. It's like any other transfer window. We'd be looking to strengthen. We'd be looking at where the areas of weakness are in the squad and, and going and try and find players that can help us out with um, getting to where we want to be. You mentioned his name there. How important is your relationship going to be with Richard Hughes? Yeah, for me, that's probably the most important relationship at the football club at the moment. Richard's got fantastic pedigree uh, of what he did with Forest Green and, and how they got promoted and also appointing Rob Edwards there. And that for me was a big attraction as well as as, as long as, as as well as Andy Cullen and um, and what he did with with Russell Martin at MK. So there's there's real sort of pedigree there, um, even at that level before we even think about what the owners have done in their previous businesses. So myself and Rich will work really closely. Um, we've been in each other's pocket already for for the entire day, pushing each other, challenging each other. Um, that's my that's my ask of him that he always pushes me, challenges me. Um, gives me the best tools to be able to go and win games of football um, and that's it and you know I think we're very very aligned on that and, and we know exactly how we want to work with each other. Now to look forward what's your overall goal as Pompey head coach both in the short term and the long term? Short term is is just to you know get this get this place bouncing again and and to really you know turn Fratton Park into what it is which is an incredibly tough place to play football if you're an opposition player and a brilliant place to play if you're at home. Um, <clears throat> doing that away from home as well, of course, is important because you know, we have fantastic away following and um, we, you know, we've got to get the away form right as well. But I think there's, there's just a bit of a lift, a bit more energy in the short term. Uh, you know, long term, we, what we want to do is, is create an environment where uh, everything is geared towards success. That's the, the best way to put it. So without putting any targets on it in terms of promotion, in terms of getting to a particular league and finishing there. What we want to do is just make sure that everything we do is, is with, you know, again, the interests of Portsmouth at, at heart. And uh, you know, every single decision is made to ensure the success of, of the football club, um, whether it's me here or whether it's whoever you know, succeeds me one day in the future. Now, you've arrived just one day before our game against Exeter, as you've mentioned previously. Is that ideally how you'd like it, getting straight, in, straight into the thick of it? No, ideally, I think as a coach, you'd like a, you'd like probably a pre-season, a six weeks build up um, and you can really start to, first of all, talk about you know, things like fitness. You can get those fitness principles into the, into the lads pretty early on and then start talking about how you're going to play football. So I think ideally you'd have that, you'd have a lot longer lead in. We've got one day, that's absolutely fine. Um, that happens in football, it's one of those things and I've done it as a player where I've, I've um, moved on transfer deadline day, I've done it as a player where I signed on a, a Friday and played on a Saturday. Um, it is slightly different, I think, as a head coach because there's so many things to think about. But certainly uh, for me, it is just you know, massively exciting to come in and, and have everything to do on day one. And, and hopefully uh, you know, I know I'm going to embrace it and, and get on with it and, and do the job that you have to do tomorrow. You've played at Fratton Park many times in your career as a player. So what are some of your best memories of the stadium? I don't have any because we always got beat. <laughs> um, it, it, it's, it's incredible to come here. And you feel the history and it's a proper old historic stadium that on the other side has the you know, capability to, um, you know, I, I've seen the plans for development here. The plans are for development. I love that. I love the fact that you don't have to knock the stadium down and start again to expand. And you can feel it when you walk in, you can feel that whether you're a, a lifelong Portsmouth fan or you aren't. And I, I've done that as a, as a fan here and I've also done it as a player and, and I feel that and I love it. I love walking in. And then the thing I hate the most is when you are one nil down or you two nil down, and the and the, the Portsmouth side are on top of you, and and that's that's what we want to get. We want to get to the stage where opposition are feeling that. I felt it. It's not a nice place to be, and that's what that's what I want to get. I want to I want them to leave. I don't want to welcome into Fratton Park. I want them to leave having a terrible time, and they can enjoy the history like I did, but not enjoy the time on the pitch. How much are you looking forward to immersing yourself in the city of Portsmouth and gaining the understanding of the people and, and the culture as well? Yeah, it's a big priority for me. Early on, I'm, I'm moving down um, on my own. So at the moment, um, <clears throat> my family's going to move down in the summer. So we've, we've got the plans in place. I'm coming down for, for four months and then we're going to look, um, look for some accommodation in the summer and, and bring my two daughters down and try and settle in here. We're going to be sending the eldest to school. And really getting involved, that's something that's always been really important to me all through my career is that, especially as a, as a, as a head coach, I'd always done it as a player, but I think getting involved in, in the city is, is really important. Getting a feel for what it means to <clears throat> actually you know, be a football fan in this community, 
I don't think you can replace that and I'll, I'll be there, I'll be out and about and hopefully everyone will, will see me and um, feel free to say hi. Not too much abuse if possible, but um, yeah, that's a big part of it for me. I'm really looking forward to that. And just to round us off, what's your message to the Pompey fans? My message to the Pompey fans is, is please get behind the boys, get behind the boys. I know how good you are. I know how good you are here. I know how good you are away. Um, let's let's utilise that. Let's make that the force that it is. And please get behind them um, no matter what happens. And if you give us a bit of time, uh, you will see the, the fruits of our labour coming through and you'll see success at Portsmouth, I'm, I'm sure of it. John, it's been great to talk to you. Thanks very much for your time. And on behalf of everyone at Portsmouth Football Club, we wish you the best of luck. Cheers, Max. Thanks very much.